My name is Matthew Pepwe, and I'll be doing a virtual reading of Cuban literature in the age of black insurrection. I'll be reading from chapter two of my book, looking at Juan Francisco Manzano's relationship to the Spanish Catholic Church. Juan Francisco Manzano was born in 1797, and he died in 1853. He produced the only known a Spanish-American slave autobiography, and he published it in English in translation in London in 1840, five years prior to Frederick Douglass. My book is available with the University Press of Mississippi. Manzano emulated the humility and mercy of Christ throughout his autobiography in order to humanize himself in the eyes of a white Catholic readership Manzano regarded himself a manso cordero, meek lamb, who by the force of circumstances transformed himself into a roaring leon, lion. He even acknowledged human suffering as an act of piety that would bring God nigh in one of his letters to Domingo del Monte. But if suffering for the holy faith condemned him to a life of perpetual slavery, Manzano would have to search for spiritual resources, cut from another cloth. Manzano transformed himself from faithful slave, esclavo fiel, as he once described himself, into la criatura más desprecia, the most despicable creature imaginable. Such a radical transformation meant that Manzano had embraced an anti-slavery worldview and had become cognizant of the religious doctrines that held him in bondage. Notwithstanding historical precedent, or Spanish legal theory, Manzano's mistresses rendered him property that could be disposed of as according to their whims. I argue that Manzano fought to redeem his body from the person-property duality that racial slavery inflicted upon Africans and their descendants. But in order to redeem his body from slavery, Manzano had to wrest control of the symbolic practices, both racial and religious, that Cuban slave society wielded over him. Slave traders captured millions of men, women, and children on the African continent, marched them to the sea, and transported them to the Western Hemisphere in some 36,000 voyages. But they could not hold those bodies in captivity unless they also stole their minds. Manzano struggled to unshackle his mind, for it was the theft of the mind that made the African descended body compliant to the dictates of white supremacy. Thank you. Ashe.